there is always something wrong. I'm always going to be seeking approval and my self-value, my self-worth, I don't have any. I have none. And so then how does that manifest as you become an adult? It impacts the decisions that you make, the partners that you choose, your friends and careers. And it just weaves its way through your entire life. And then you no longer, you don't speak up for yourself. You lose your voice. You lose your your intuition, your sense to listen to your inner voice, because now it's it's corrupted because all you hear is the tape playing from the person that was supposed to love you. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is, it's fascinating. One of the things that that I, the sentence that comes to me from that, and it played out in, in my life as well. I don't typically say that it's daddy issues for me, but I know, but I know it is, is the concept, because I have a very uh, risk averse, mm. relatively successful father who always landed on the right side of the fence he's as i say he's just turning 90 so grew up in the with world Mm. war ii around them not participant in it so there's that thinking right there but the what i learned from him is i was i was never good enough for anything other than used or hand-me-downs because that's what i got and he's cheap there is no mixing the words successful, financially stable, cheap. And my way is the right way and the mm. only way. And so for me, as a, in my early career as a professional accountant, I know numbers. You know, I work with startup companies and you know, mergers and acquisitions, $50 million. I know numbers. But if I, as an example, bought a house for $142,000 and sold it for $175,000. To him, I didn't make any money. That's basic There's... numbers I did. Yeah. And I got that 142 from a house that I bought for 92. And I, but in his mind, because he wow. doesn't, because what I do with it, what I did with it, like buying the next house and the mm-hmm. next house was was completely in at odds with how he saw it. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. so and it's always been that way. And it, I was I've tried over the last number of years to you know, and I had a great growing up. You know, it's mm-hmm. upper upper middle class. We traveled all over the over the world. Great education, everything that screams white privilege. Yes. And yet I screwed my life up, but it all, I could pinpoint it all yeah. back to this particular thing, because while what you're talking about is it whittles away at your self-worth and all that sort of stuff, but there's yes. a, there's a side to it that I, I've seen a, in a lot of women, yourself, I can see, I can see it myself, where you go through these periods, either, you know, it's early or mid where self-worth goes down, mm-hmm. but confidence when you're in independent scenarios that you create and your public persona is you are very self-confident, mm-hmm. well-presented, know your crap and so on. And that I say, but at a certain point in time, this confidence comes over and starts healing this self-worth as you start looking at the different pieces and so on. Is that what you found? Because obviously you are not sitting there as a as a woman massively lacking in self-confidence and self-worth. No, it, I will say that it was a journey. So for me, it was having to unravel 